Teotihuacan is without doubt one of the most mysterious places within the Americas, or possibly on Earth. While the incredible complexity and architectural precision has baffled archaeologists for decades, there is a far more perplexing mystery specifically surrounding the pyramids within this ancient place. The presence of mica, a powerful radioactive insulator, is perhaps one of the biggest enigmas of these great ancient structures. Established or quite possibly re-inhabited around 100 BC, until its fall between the 7th and 8th centuries, Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world, with over 150,000 inhabitants at its peak. According to archaeologists, the advanced design of Teotihuacan suggests that ancient builders had advanced knowledge not only of architecture but of complex mathematical and astronomical sciences. Additionally, one of the more intriguing characteristics differentiating it from many other ancient sites is the fact that from the air, Teotihuacan strangely resembles that of a modern computer circuit board. Curiously, when Hernán Cortés and his men conquered the Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they asked the natives who had built such a colossal city. The Aztec replied, We were not the builders of Teotihuacan. This city was built by the Kina Natsin, a race of giants who came here from the heavens in the times of the second sun. The Aztecs were in fact the ancient civilization that named the place Teotihuacan, yet they did not know the original name for the city. The pyramids had remained buried, hidden under several meters of vegetation for unknown millennia, only rediscovered within the last century. Then in 1906, on the fifth deck of the Pyramid of the Sun, a thick layer of laminated mica covering an enormous area was unearthed. At that time in 1906, mica was an invaluable resource, highly priced on the world market. It is used for the construction of capacitors and is considered an incredibly efficient electrical and thermal insulator, which has a melting point of over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Most of the mica found in 1906 at Teotihuacan was unfortunately robbed out, subsequently sold at a great price to resource tycoons. Fortunately, however, not all the mica has disappeared from Teotihuacan. Today, there are still a few places where you can find the original mica, carefully laid within the pyramid's body. It seems for some mysterious reason, the unknown builders of this great ancient city managed to extract and transport this mica from far away. According to tests carried out by the Viking Foundation, discoverer of one of the rooms coated with mica, this valuable material has an unmistakable signature allowing us to tell exactly where in the world it had originally been extracted. It was discovered that it had come from a region located more than 3,200 kilometers away within Brazil. This in of itself is an enigma. The only real purpose it would seem for the use of such an exotic material is for the management of electrical currents. A theory, thankfully, more and more talented minds are beginning to look at seriously. As a result, we may finally unravel one of the greatest mysteries still plaguing the modern man. What were the pyramids built for? One of the strongest arguments in support of the existence of a past but now deliberately obscured ancient, advanced, now lost civilization are the impossibly enormous erosion-resistant megaliths, many far over a thousand tons in weight seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another, as if the task was a simple one, tasks that appear to have required minimal effort to have once accomplished. Yet any explanation as to how these stones were moved, or any logical explanation as to how they achieved such task, remains elusive. Not only are there enormous, as yet unexplained megaliths all over ancient antiquity, the almost impossibly precise decoration and seemingly laser-cut accuracy found upon many of these ruins baffle all who gaze upon them or have the unthankful task of attempting to explain them. Nearly every aspect of these masterfully decorated stones, many clearly of a tremendous age, are indicative of an advanced, now lost, stone-cutting technology. The reality that these decorated temples, tombs, and pyramids are found littering the countless inexplicable ruins found all over the world are nearly always accompanied by megalithic blocks, 
somehow quarried and once brought to each site, and seemingly, no matter the size, lifted aloft, forming incredible trilithons, or blocks placed into walls, perfectly placed with stunning precision. Another reason why stone ruins are such a great area for debate, and ultimately, a field which presents so many proofs for an advanced antediluvian civilization, one who were once capable of achieving such feats, is the unexplainable nature of these puzzling, inexplicably large blocks. Unexplainable according to mainstream academic opinion, and are predictably still widely overlooked. Regardless of this, our own research has exposed countless of these blocks. The pregnant woman in Baalbek, for example, once argued as being left where it now lay due to the incline, and its tremendous, once argued impossible size, is now however understood to have been found to have been part of a wall, with blocks now excavated, discovered to have been of an even larger size. Without question, many undeniable proofs, in direct contradiction of the currently defended mainstream theory, which pertains to this being our first and only ever societal development after simply appearing after an ice age, this being our only ever technologically advanced civilization ever to have existed. And although again, as previously mentioned, our ancestors within known permitted history often re-inhabited these builds, they often left an archaeological footprint. Not only allowing those in the so-called know a stooge to pin the construction on, allowing the site to simply be brushed under the proverbial rug, but then to simply overlook any logical explanation as to how they were utilized by said capable claimed culprits. This secrecy deprives us of what we all deserve as equally sentient beings to provide us with the truth. During our own investigative research, in an effort to identify just how many times civilization had possibly experienced cataclysm here on Earth, a question which arose during our studies surrounding Italy's incredible ancient stone walls, when during said research, we thankfully stumbled across a very special part of this surviving relic. We found one of the ancient walls had two stages of ancient stonework in its makeup. One known as Cyclopean masonry, a substantial amount is now known regarding Cyclopean masonry, and has virtually been replicated in the modern era. However, the other style is known as polygonal masonry, a style we know nothing of. How they built these walls, or even how they created the randomly shaped blocks. It is a mystifying style of stoneworking, and yet another piece of undeniable proof of lost knowledge and thus of a lost civilization. If one watches our video regarding Basda, not only is there enormous amounts of undeniable photographic evidence of advanced ancient tool marks, like a fingerprint cast in stone for millennia, these tool marks eventually enabling us to link the cave with countless ancient ruins the world over. Ultimately, we believe we have not only proven beyond doubt that these technologically advanced and once highly capable civilizations did exist, not only existed, but are still being blatantly denied and overlooked by funded individuals. Yet it is not only the feat of being able to cut the stones, but create structures from them of gargantuan sizes, all once perfectly refined with such delicacy, masterful cutting ability and finish, and to say such tasks were achieved with mere copper or similar metals, is a lie so preposterous that even those providing explanation must know it's a lie, and this willingness to do so for funding we find highly compelling. We recently made a community post pertaining to the remarkable yet little known or indeed studied discovery made within the extremely ancient city of Petara in modern-day Turkey. And due to popular demand, we are going to cover this peculiar artifact in greater depth. As mentioned, although there are many archaeological sites within Turkey, and particularly within this region, this peculiar feature is rarely discussed within modern academic or archaeological circles, and once you realize what this enormous relic might have once been, you may realize why. Known as the ancient aqueduct of Patera, it was once a series of tubular systems hewn from solid sandstone, presumably running from settlement to settlement. 
some parts clearly displaying a significant level of erosion, indicating a truly colossal antiquity that has, unfortunately, made reconstruction of some of the pipes quite difficult. Claimed to be that of the Romans, used for transportation of water, however, what is interesting regarding Patera, and indeed many other ancient sites claimed by the Romans as their own constructions, is that it too holds some unexplainable features, things that separate it from the other, more standard Roman architecture. It seems for many ancient, highly eroded sites found around our world, the culprit for construction is often put upon the most convenient candidate, completely absent of any explanation regarding construction. In 1993, a monumental pillar was discovered at Patera, on which is a Greek dedication to Claudius and an official announcement of the building of roads by the governor, Quintus Veranius Nepos, in giving place names and distances, essentially an entire public itinerary. Yet, alas, they forgot to mention the enormous undertaking that was the aqueduct. One has to wonder, where did the Romans get all their ingenious ideas? Were they all originals? Or perhaps, as we have posited in the past, akin to the ancient Egyptians, had some helpful head starts from a once far more capable, far more knowledgeable people who left structures still standing to this day? The little research that we have unearthed regarding the original site does indeed indicate that Patera's ancient piping system is in fact not Roman, but the origin of the Romans' inspiration when it came to the creation of their own piping systems. Even the original settlement and building of Patera was attributed to and named after Patera, son of Apollo, a great deity, a mythical figure. It pertains to a first, highly eroded, perplexing stretch of 5.4 kilometers along the steep western slope of Kisla Mountain, down to the community of Akbel. Details from RomanAqueducts.com regarding the research is as follows, quote, It originally consisted of a masonry channel, presumably of Hellenistic age, of which only scant relics remain. This stretch was later replaced, probably by the Romans, by a single line of 55 to 58 centimeter long ceramic pipes. The pipeline was laid directly on the ground, alongside the abandoned channel, and locally positioned on low rocks or in cut rocks." End quote. Are we looking at a far more ancient, far more advanced relic than one is first led to believe? A relic later replicated to a certain degree by the Romans for their own ends. We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Who carved Kailash Temple? Who quarried, carved, and transported the Moai statues around the coastline of Easter Island? The reason for our persistence in reiterating these questions is that it unlocks one's perception to the reality of unknowns. They suddenly notice that there are some things about the past in which they had been taught were a lie. The ancient marvels of India as but one example. How can those who are placed in a position of trust, responsibility, and above all critical thought, explain these stoneworks away as ones coming from the hands of untrained slaves? Yet even when these ruins are presented as that of the work of ancient masters, the tools and metal technologies available to any of them were simply incapable of accomplishing these refined, masterfully finished feats sometimes leaving walls of granite so precisely executed they became reflective. The more one studies these stone-worked anomalies, still abundant amongst the many as yet unexplained sites all over the world, you soon begin to see scars and marks left upon these stones reminiscent of modern-day electric power tools, and some indicative of stone-cutting technology, which evades even our own modern capabilities like that of the star holes we have covered in the past. These mysterious artifacts suggest the civilization responsible was not only advanced, but possibly once more advanced than modern man. Panoia's Sanctuary According to Academia, once ordered to be built by the Roman senator Caius Calpurnius Rufinus, they claim the sanctuary was dedicated to infernal deities, headed by Serapis and the deities of Lapatius. However, 
Due to the astonishing precision of some of the stone cuts made into these large granite boulders, we posit that the Romans were merely re-inhabitors of this, along with many other ancient structures, to which mystery history attests the creation of, were far out of the capabilities of the Roman Empire itself. Furthermore, that the Romans rapidly recorded technological and agricultural developments, just like that of the Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., was largely the result of deciphering, reverse engineering, and the eventual adoption of technological relics left by a far more capable, once world-going, yet now lost civilization. At the site, there are many impressive ancient stone-carving achievements, perfectly square boreholes, largely perfect cylindrical drill holes, left in the hard granite many thousands of years ago. The volume and abundance of lichen species, and the sizes these colonies have become, also confirming the great age and authenticity of the boreholes and the site itself. Ultimately, if one wishes to conclude that this ancient sanctuary was indeed the work of the claim builder, proof must be provided that said individuals were capable of such incredible work, not only capable of the task, but the cut upon stones engulfed with millennia-old colonies of lichen without seemingly damaging them. For many colonies now draped across the stoneworks, we attest are far older than the Roman Empire itself, with many flowers already a considerable size before they watched the Romans arrive, thrive, and eventually disappear. Yet alas, without biological proof of the age of some of these species, and the fact that any funded institution would dismiss any of the dates we would pursue as anomalies, it appears the jury remains out on the site and the debate rages on. It is a place which we find highly compelling. The ancient ruins of Egypt, regardless of their astonishing characteristics or the often enormous megalithic building blocks used in the site's construction, are still claimed by an academia with no explanation as to how, as the work of our well-studied yet far more recent ancestors, the Egyptians. It is one of the most crucial ancient locations when it comes to exposing the conspiratorial nature of academia, a denial of the obvious by those who were faithfully tasked with explaining the origins of said sites, or indeed how said sites were created. Any of these long-awaited answers, however, remain elusive. For in reality, no one knows who built the ancient pyramids of Giza how they did it, when they did it, or indeed, why. We simply cannot explain how these feats of engineering and architecture were accomplished. For although such ruins are claimed as a particular group's work, there is no logical reasoning that can be provided to confirm this claim. Additionally, there are many other, no less gigantic megalithic blocks which can be found throughout Egypt, often found used within the many temples, but also seen buried concealed within the foundations, which make up part of the floor at the pyramid's bases. And Dendera Temple is of no exception. We have covered the temple in the past, focusing on an intriguing depiction which many have come to conclude depicts a lost lighting technology. Some individuals have now created working replicas of this intriguing device. We have also covered the steps found within the temple these steps appear to have been melted at some point in the past, rather than simple entropy. The temple, however, possesses many more inexplicable secrets, all concealed from the majority of Earth's population by a field of study that firstly lacks any demonstrative evidence, but also due to the evidence which one can mount to support the positive past stone-cutting power technology having once existed, thus these features are effectively ignored and thus largely overlooked. Copper chisels cannot explain its existence. People who have explored the temple have found that the repeating reliefs within are perfectly symmetrical, identical in form to within millimeters of each other. The leaching of salts between surfaces are the only reasons we can see the joints in the Great Hall. Furthermore, Chris Dunn, a fellow antiquarian, has explored these intriguing clues within Dendera Temple previously. Not only did the precision of the carving stun Chris Dunn, 
but the finish upon such a brittle stone, has led Chris to conclude that high technology was once utilized to create the stone carvings. Who built Dendera? What technologies were used to construct the temple? Or indeed, ancient Egypt as a whole? Dendera is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown, a now lost antiquity, one which we find highly compelling. <laughs>